today we're reading the very well-known Psalm 19 um, for the director of music, a Psalm of David. Let's uh, read. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom, bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Let's just pause there for a moment. And here we have the um, created world around us declaring uh, the glory of God. Um, it's a beautiful um, blue sky I'm looking out of my window at at the moment, which is causing problems of the lighting in the room. I'm a lot darker. I never quite work out how that works out. But um, yeah, just one lone little cloud in the sky and you look up and it just uh, shouts to you that the bigness of God and you're drawn into staring at the stars at night and how far they are, and how big the universe is. And it, it just all proclaims that the greatness of God. And it's, uh, although, as the psalmist says, they, they, they have no speech, there's no kind of sound from them. Uh, they're speaking to us um, every day. Um, as they're proclaiming uh, God's uh, glory and uh, their voice, their testimony uh, is to everyone alive on this uh, planet. Um, their voice goes into all the earth and uh, the sun as it uh, uh, comes out of its chamber and uh, rises in the east and goes uh, round to the west. Of course, it's not doing that. We are ourselves moving, but that's uh, how we see it. Um, um, uh, gives us warmth. It makes things live. And, and all of this just proclaims the greatness of God. And so uh, we can engage with God. We hear the testimony of his glory uh, through the created world around. It's all splendid. It's all magnificent. It's all huge. But then the, the psalmist changes tack, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the law are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. We'll just pause there again. So David's gone from the, the testimony of the created order around to proclaiming the glory of God. It's all big, it's all huge. But then he now comes to the, the law of God. Now for David, um, as a king of Israel, in the middle of what we now call the Old Testament, uh, he would have had the, the five books of Moses, um, maybe one or two other things, but, but not the full extent of the word of God that we have. And yet, even in the little bit that he had, um, he was able to recognize the the significance of what he had. Look, look at how he describes it. It's the law of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the commands of the Lord, um, the fear of the Lord, the decrees of the Lord. So, so it's very much on, on, on what we know as Torah, the, the law, um, the, the, the revelation of, of God and his character and uh, the ways in which we are to live in his world. Um, and David describes the quality of that. It's, it's perfect. It's trustworthy. It's right. It's radiant. It's pure. It's firm it's it's got value in itself it is it is remarkable but then he's able to also testify to the impact in his own life it refreshes his soul it, it makes wise the simple it gives joy uh, to the heart it gives light to the eyes uh, it endures forever it's it's uh, more precious than gold it's sweeter than honey uh, through it uh, god's servants are warned uh, and in keeping them there is great reward there's something very much more intimate here isn't there than the 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 the, the wide proclamation of uh, the, the the created order and the glory that we get through that to to actually the the details here and the the uh, helpfulness of uh, the word of god as it's given to us revealed to us and the impact it has on us it helps us to live in this world it helps us to understand uh, how to uh, operating in God's created order. It, it refreshes us as we engage with it. It gives us wisdom uh, for living in this uh, world. It gives light and, and joy uh, as we uh, read it. And I wonder if that's your experience of, of the word of God. Is it a, a dull book to you? Is it a, a mysterious book? Or are you finding it transforming 
uh, your life. Um, praise the Lord, we have so much more revelation than David did. Uh, we have a much clearer view of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's come to do. We have a, a much greater record of the, the testimony of God's faithfulness than David did. He uh, only saw so much. Um, and uh, we have every reason for this word to uh, do all these things for us. But then there's a, an interesting note as we end the psalm. And I don't know if you noticed that. Um, let's read at the end, uh, verses 12 to the end. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As David engages with the living God through his creation, uh, the revelation of the, the, the heavens uh, and through the revelation of the word. Um, and as David engages with who God is and learns about how to live in God's world, he's suddenly aware of, of, of two problems. Um, hidden faults, um, errors that we fail to discern, and then willful disobedience. So, so there's a whole level of our life where we are not keeping God's law, where we are in error, where we are at fault, and we're blind to it. We've got no idea. We're oblivious to those problems. And at the same time, there are other areas where we jolly well know that we're not doing the right thing, where there's a real battle on those willful sins, uh, where we, uh, we don't need a lot of tempting or prodding to, to, to rush off in, in disobedience. And, and David said, I've, I've got both of these issues. I, I can't even see half of my areas, and, and the other half, I, I know they're what there, and boy, it's hard to fight them. Uh, and he's asking God for forgiveness of his hidden faults uh, and, and, and resistance to uh, those willful uh, sins. And obviously, uh, as we fast forward to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is where our hope is found, isn't it? And uh, David is able to um, acknowledge that uh, if those issues are dealt with, he will be blameless and innocent of great transgression. And his hope is in his Redeemer, his rock, verse 14. And it's because of Christ's death on the cross in bearing the penalty for, all us, for our sin that all our sins are dealt with. There is no penalty to pay. There's no condemnation. Um, so all that stuff that we're unaware of, uh, all our uh, secret sins, our hidden faults, our errors, uh, the penalty has been paid. And uh, so we are forgiven, even for the stuff that we don't realize that we've uh, done. Uh, and also in God's grace, by his spirit, he's, he's showing us ourselves as we uh, read the Bible, says James. It's like looking in a mirror and actually it's highlighting for us. Uh, those hidden faults and those errors and as we're confronted with them and sometimes shocked by them uh, mid-40s I'm still learning stuff about myself which I find deeply unpleasant things that I've just been blind to before uh, and here is the hope that as uh, I see them uh, I know that I'm forgiven and there is a grace for me at the same time I know the battles that are going on and so I'm made aware of some of those faults then there's a, a battle to deal with them uh, the Holy Spirit has been given we have a whole new nature, we have a whole new heart, a new mind, a new spirit. And so although the old nature is battling, uh, the, the, as the New Testament calls it, the flesh, uh, wanting to live out in sinful rebellion against God, we are now given the ability, as it says in Titus, to, to say no to ungodliness. We, we can resist. Uh, God has given us by his grace the, the strength uh, to be able to do that. And what, what a wonderful uh, blessing. So, so here is this celebration of God's revelation of himself, his glory through the, the heavens, the truth of his word through his, uh, his law, and, and yet that leaves us with a sense of our, our failing and our falling short of God's glory. And then there's the good news of the gospel and the Redeemer who's come to rescue us. And what, what a great God we have and how much to rejoice. And while the sun may warm our bodies and cheer us up, I'm feeling so much better because it's a bright spring day. The beauty of Jesus does that to uh, such a higher degree, uh, reaches the parts that creation can't reach. Um, in the depths of our being, and uh, we can rejoice in that state. So let's do that now. Father God, we uh, want to praise you as we look out on the heavens and the skies, and we want to respond to the glory which we see and to give you honour for it. At the same time, we are so grateful for your word because there is so much we wouldn't know just by gazing at the skies. We would have that sense of awe, that overwhelming sense of greatness, but no connection with you. Uh, more than that so, well, we thank you so much for your word then that reveals yourself to us that that uh, is able to refresh our soul meet our needs to uh, help us to 
um, uh, understand the world we live in, to give us light for our eyes and to uh, guide our paths that we might have counsel to know how to live in this world. And we thank you so much for your word. But as we meet you in creation and in the word, we do find ourselves exposed and falling short. And so we want to thank you most of all for a redeemer who is able to cover the sins that we are unaware of, our hidden faults, and is able to, by his spirit, enable us to resist the temptation to give in to those willful sins. And we thank you that we are being changed by your grace and can expect further progress. And we thank you that one day we will be free of this battle because we will be in glory with you. Father, help us then to praise you as we see your, your glory and creation around Help us to rejoice as we hear your voice in your word and help us to, to delight in the gospel that enables us to uh, enjoy these things without being uh, cowed in fear because of our sin, but that bring us out of, of that shell of, of fear into, into your love uh, and, and the beauty and brightness of the gospel. We thank you for Jesus in his name. Amen.